I'm going to introduce you to what is one of my favorite ideas of the Energy Project, which is the power of renewal. Um, I come from a company that we talk about human energy, and we teach people how they can show up best in the world to accomplish what's important to them with um, great performance, but also with a really high level of satisfaction and sustainability. So I'm going to introduce you to what is one of my favorite ideas of the Energy Project, which is the power of renewal. So when I know you guys are sitting here, some of you at least are now saying, did you hear all we have to do from the day? Like We have a lot on our plates. Who has time to renew? Right? We have too much to do. So renewal, we, we don't really have the time for that. So I want to start by introducing you to one of the first ideas, a foundational idea that we'd say at the Energy Project, which is it's not just the number of hours that you bring to whatever you're doing that creates value, but it's the energy that you bring to whatever you're doing as well. So I have your time for the next 12, 15 minutes, right? But if you didn't sleep well last night and you're exhausted, or if you had a fight with a loved one this morning and you're preoccupied, or you're waiting for a medical test result, or you have something that's due at the end of the day, I might have your time, but I don't have your energy. So the first paradigm shift we need to make is that it's time plus energy that creates value. And value is what we need to bring to our work. So now let's talk about what comprises human energy. What does that mean, right? Energy or energetic. It turns out that there are four components that comprise human energy. It's physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual energy. So let's think about physical energy. This is the quantity of our energy. There are four things that make up physical energy. So when you're thinking about your physical energy, what are you thinking about? Think about exercise, right? So we talk about movement and, and, and exercise. You're thinking about nutrition, what you eat and you drink. Um, you're thinking about sleep. Quick aside, sleep is your biggest bang for your buck. Okay, 95% of us need eight to seven or eight hours of sleep a night to be fully rested, and most of us are exhausted. And then there's one other component that no one ever thinks about. What do you think it is? We have sleep, we have exercise, we have um, nutrition. Daytime, rest, and renewal. <laughs> People are laughing. Why didn't you get that one? <laughs> ah, we don't value it, right? So the point of our time today is to really take a look at that and why valuing it is a game changer. What we're going to talk about can transform everything. The second is emotional energy. So you know feelings matter, right? So how we feel, it dictates our interactions, our behaviors. Um, when you know about mirror neurons and the way our brains work, we know how um, emotions are so contagious, okay? And it turns out that there are certain emotions that are correlated to high performance. So understanding the way that works, we can actively cultivate emotions that serve us well. The third is mental energy. So this is about how we pay attention and how we focus. And as you know, our attention is more under siege than ever. And then the last is spiritual. So the first three, those are the how we get things done. Spiritual is why. What gets you out of bed in the morning? What gets you excited? Because obviously if something matters to you, you show up with more energy for it. All right. So when we're thinking about energy, we're moving to what is the central point of our time together, which is to perform at our best, we must balance intermittent energy um, expenditure with intentional rest and renewal. Human beings are not designed to operate like computers, which means continuously running multiple programs over long periods of time. Human beings are meant to pulse. The pulse is the natural rhythm of being human. Okay? So think of what are some things that pulse? Our heart, our breathing, we breathe in and out. Right? Our muscles expand and contract. Our stomachs, they fill, they empty. You think about digestion. So this is the natural rhythm. So I'm going to play a game right now. I'm going to ask you all to stand up. Stand up. It's the energy project, right? We're not going to sit the whole time. And so when I say go, I want you to take a big deep breath, and I want you to hold it as long as you can, OK? And when you can't hold it any longer, no big deal, no shame. Just sit down. Ready, set, go. And hold it. And I'm not up to date on my CPR, so if you, if you need to sit, just sit. But when you can't do any more, just, just have a seat. Thank you. Whew. All right, I'm going to call it here. The rest of you are competitive. Sit down. I don't want anybody fainting, all right? All right. 
Who wants to go again? Who wants to play by show of hands? Okay, we have one glutton for punishment, but no one else wants to play. Why don't you want to play right now? What do you need to do right now? You need to rest and renew. Okay, so this right here, this is the game-changing idea that especially people in our field, in our world, need to get our heads wrapped around. Most of you think that renewal is a luxury. Oh, I grabbed lunch today. Oh, I got outside on this lovely day. I took a break at some point, right? And I want you to understand, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that renewal is not a nice thing to do, it's not a luxury, it is an essential part at you showing up your best. What do you think of that, right? How many people here lift weights? bunch of us, right? This is really good. Do you lift the same muscle group every day? Nope. Why not? If you don't know the way this works, when you lift weights, it makes small tears in your muscle fibers. That's the way it's supposed to work. It's actually during the rest period that your muscle fibers grow back stronger than ever. So in part, okay, progress in weight lifting is contingent upon the quality of the renewal. And that's the same thing with human beings, all right? To drive this, um, point home, and this is, seems like a counterintuitive, you know, big idea, but the more intense the performance demand, the greater it is to rest and renew. That's counterintuitive, right? You have so much to do, what do you do? I'm going to stay later, I'm going to stay up, I'm going to work through the weekend. You don't sit in a meeting where people say, oh my goodness, we have this deadline by Friday, what are we going to do to renew our energy? That's not the way we think, right? Think of all of the ways we talk about this. Burning the midnight oil, burning the candle at both ends, push through. Okay. Um, think about Formula One racing or NASCAR, you're familiar with this. Is it the car that goes pedal to metal, longest and hardest without stopping that ever wins the race? Nope, what's this? It's pit, pit stop, right? Think about what they do at pit stops. They change the oil, they fill the fluids, they change the tires. So in part, success in racing is contingent upon the quality of renewal. And this is a cartoon that makes us laugh. I try to keep my coffee buzz going until my martini buzz kicks in, <laughs> right? So it's kind of funny, but think about what we do. Our bodies are brilliant at letting us know when they're dipping. I'm starting to lose interest, I'm tired, I'm running down. What do we do? Grab a cup of coffee, grab a sugary snack, all right? And it is counterproductive. Really, really bad things happen when we ignore our need to renew. Career-ending mistakes are made when people are depleted. I have colleagues along my long career in social services and juvenile justice and residential treatment and all the things that many of us care deeply about who have lost their jobs because they didn't pay attention to this important part and made career-ending mistakes when they were depleted. So how often do you need to renew? I think, I think I'm, hopefully I'm selling you on this, right? But let's, what, what do we need to think about? So I want to introduce you to the ultradian rhythm. This was discovered by Nathaniel Kleitman, who's considered the grandfather of sleep research. He's the person that discovered the basic rest activity cycle. It's the cycles we go through at night. What he discovered is that there's a daytime analog called the ultradian rhythm, and that all human beings go from a higher level of physiological alertness to a dip every 90 to 120 minutes. This was further substantiated by an Israeli sleep researcher, his name was Perez Levy, who took a group of subjects and he put them in a low sensory environment for 24 hours. Asked them to try to fall asleep every 20 minutes, which was 72 attempts, hard to do. What he found is that there was a time every 90 minutes when they were more easily able to fall asleep. So what are the implications for this? Every 90 minutes, you move from this higher level of alertness to a dip. So we need to do something to intentionally renew our energy. So think about the ramifications. Obviously, no meeting should surpass this, right? And, and sometimes we're in an all-day meeting or something, but people need a break, okay? Once you start to override this, you start to lose people, um, and then we start to rely on things like stress hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol, that kick in, not as effective as it, of when we intentionally renew our energy. So how long does this take, right? You're like, oh, back to the time thing, right? I have a very busy day. So I want you to just get comfortable in your seats, cross your legs, close your eyes, and when I say go, I just want you to focus on your breath, breathing gently, in for a count of three, out for a count of six, and go.
and stop. How do you feel? Rested, right? Relaxing. Took less than 60 seconds, okay? So it would be ideal if every 90 minutes you committed to getting up. I mean, obviously you know physical movement is the best, right? <laughs> Sitting is the death of us. So even just standing up, stretching, but ideally you're going out, maybe you're getting some sunshine, a walk, 10, 15 minutes, but you can get real rest and renewal in as little as 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, just by intentional breathing. Breathing is one of the absolute best ways to calm your physiology, okay? And that took less than, less than a minute. So we need to rethink our relationship with renewal. I talked to you about the ultradian rhythm, right, which is the proactive um, stance on it, which is that every 90 minutes, hopefully, you're going to commit to getting up throughout the day. And how can you remember this? Set your alarm, put it on your calendar, Okay, have someone, accountability partner say, Let's, at 10 o'clock, why don't we go, we'll take a five minute walk outside. So there's lots of ways to remember this. Renewal is also brilliant at calming the physiology when you've been triggered. And as we know in our profession, that's sometimes even more important. So when you get that email that has now ticked you off or you've gotten bad news or a client or someone has been really disrespectful, what happens if you answer right away before you calm the, yeah, people are shaking their head, right? Going back to those career ending moments. Renewal is a brilliant way to also calm that physiology as well. So we need to rethink renewal, and this is how I want to end our time together. I want you all to think about your renewal plans. What can you do throughout the day, no longer than 90 minutes, across the four domains? So I want you to think physical renewal, standing up, um, nutrition and, and, and um, drinking water, getting a healthy snack, emotional renewal, looking at pictures of loved ones, calling someone that you care about, um, mental renewal, meditation, calming the mind, spiritual renewal, connecting to your higher power, gratitude journal, praying, whatever it is that matters to you. Um, and I want you to think, and think about when you have two minutes, when you have five minutes, when you have 15 minutes, and I want you just to write down a couple of things that you're gonna commit to. Um, as you see, it, it's, gratitude is an incredible way to calm the physiology and change your mood. Okay, just writing down a couple of things can be really powerful. Spending time with loved ones, attaching to others, sunshine. Sunshine during the day helps you sleep better at night. Um, and of course, breathing is amazing. So the good news about renewal is that you can train. The more you do it, the better you get. So one of the markers of fitness is the idea, it's the speed at which you recover. And you can get better at renewing. And the paradigm shift we're gonna end with is this. You often hear people say, life's a marathon, it's not a sprint. And what does that mean? Slow down, pace yourself, you're in it for the long haul. We want you to think of yourself as a sprinter. What does a sprinter do? They come up to the line, clear ending point in sight. So for us is no longer than what? 90 minutes. They go all out when the gun goes off and then they stop and they renew. And many sprinters will run multiple races in the same day. So this is my challenge to us. How are we going to create personal and professional practices for individuals and groups using this very, very important information? We can do it, okay? We must do it. It's essential and we can do it together. Thank you very much. I'm going to introduce you to what is one of my favorite ideas of the Energy Project, which is the power of renewal.